Welcome to another X's and Argos film session. I'm Ben Grant. Today we're going to take a closer look at the Toronto Argonauts 2020 draft class. And there are a lot of reasons for Argos fans to be excited from Deshaun Brissett all the way through to Sam Baker. Dejan Brissett is a lot of fun to watch, and you probably already know he's he's pretty fast, agile, has good vertical, and all those things are great. But what I'm most excited about is his intelligence, his body control, and his focus. So fast receivers don't generally like a lot of contact when they run. It throws off their stride. They get pushed off their stem. Their, their timing is altered. Brissett, on the other hand, seeks out contact in man coverage. So let's take a look at what he does here with his go route. Now, if you've got an outside release like you do on a go route, corners love to pin you to the sideline. It gives you less room to operate and it gives the QB a smaller window. So here, Brissett knows he's got man coverage. His corner's staring right at him. He's got an inside shade. And Brissett doesn't want to get pinned by the corner. He thrives in this alley here. So the first thing he does is he attacks his technique so aggressively, in fact, that the corner has to speed turn in order to stay with the play. But then instead of trying to pull away from him, Brissett slows and then leans back into him. So he's got the control, the corner's off balance and goes to ground. Now Brissett accelerates as he, as he moves into his fade. He leans into the alley that he's created and makes a nice catch. I'd love to see him fight a little harder to stay in bounds. That's easy for me to say sitting here a little harder to do when you're when you're running 20 miles an hour, trying to keep your balance after contact, tracking a football over your shoulder. But I would like to see him try to fight that a little bit more, see if he couldn't have run in for the touchdown there. Look at the situation here. So it's third and six in overtime. The quarterback never even looks at anyone else. This is another go route. He's lined up a little further inside, so he doesn't need to make that inside move first. It's a speed move to the outside. And notice here, so the corner's trying to use Brissett's momentum to pin him to the sideline. But our guy's going to fight to stay on his stem. He doesn't want to get into this alley until the last second. So he, he knows, at this point, he knows where the ball's going to land. But if he takes a direct line there, it's going to give the defender an opportunity to to knock him out of bounds or get a piece of it, or maybe the ball gets picked off. So he stays on his stem. And, and here we are. So we're on the three yard line here. And the alley he's left himself is 10 yards wide. Now he fades and makes a great catch for the win. More of the same, the corner's trying to pin him, but Brissett's not going to be pushed off his stem. Instead, he's he's leaning into the corner so he can control that last second push off or, or chicken wing and, and make the catch. The QB should fade him to the sideline like we've seen on those last two plays, but this is a bad ball. It's short, it's inside, and it's got interception written all over it. Brissett maintains contact with the DB because he's comfortable with it. And then he jumps into the corner. So that keeps the corner from getting any lift. Brissett comes down with the football, bails out his QB in the process. It's not really hard to see why QBs look his way on big downs like his quarterback did here. And you can see how much faith the QB has in him on this play. This is cover three. Brissett finds a little bit of space. The quarterback rifles it. It's about it's about 10 feet in the air. So either Brissette comes down with it or it ends up in the stands. And look at this ridiculous vertical. This is crazy body control. He secures it before he hits the ground. That's sick. And if you think the last one is good, you'll love this. So Brissette's got a fat post from the outside, cuts under the free. Now this ball is going to be thrown high and behind this angle here doesn't really do it justice. Here we go. On a full sprint, he jumps three and a half feet into the air, rotates his body 180 degrees, extends. And remember that he's traveling right now at about 15 miles an hour in this direction. He secures the football, nails the backward somersault. That's some good football. This is why the Argos selected 
the young man from Mississauga, second overall in the 2020 draft. If there's an area of concern for Brissett, it's simply the unknown. So he's not going to be the fastest, the quickest, the most athletic guy in the field. And the question is, how is that going to affect his game? You see, at Richmond, we saw a lot of plays like this one here where he'd find the soft spot in the zone, sit and make the catch, but then instead of turning up field and securing the first down, he'd double back, you know, looking for that home run. And he could get away with it like he does here. But then suddenly at Virginia, everyone's faster, bigger, more athletic, and that doesn't work anymore. The same thing's going to apply in the CFL because everyone, again, is bigger, faster, quicker, and he's going to have to make those adjustments to his game. I'm not worried about it. He's an intelligent athlete. I fully expect him to play within himself, make those adjustments, but it is something that he's going to have to be ready for as he heads into his first CFL season. Theron Churchill is pretty much good at everything that you'd want an offensive lineman to be good at. I think there's a good chance that the Argos see him as a guard, maybe instead of a tackle, just because of his his size and his skill set. They sort of lend themselves uh, to the guard position. But both options are on the table with him. He's a professional caliber lineman. So let's start with run blocking, which is, is what he does best. There's not a lot for Churchill to think about here. He's got a five tech. He's just supposed to push him out. And when you, when you watch the whole play, it's a huge success. He drives his man like right off the screen and never reappears. But let's break that down a little bit more. So I, I love his stance. He never gives anything away. And we got a perfect fit here. Feet wide, toes out, knees bent, hips low, elbows are in. And he starts to drive here. Now, I'm not crazy about the head angle here, but look at the power. And he's gone awesome. Here we're going to see Churchill with something called a scoop block. Scoop block's a a tough assignment. So he's going to leave the end and he's going to scoop the three tech. This is challenging because it requires you to gain an inside position on a guy who already has inside position. So the guard's going to give him a little chip before he climbs up to the backer. We got an honest stance. And now great explosion, working for leverage. And at this point, he's got him. Look at that. And now we're driving, running back's gone. That's a great scoop block. Same game, a few minutes later now. So they're going to ask Churchill to pull here. This is going to show off his speed a little bit, but it's also such a nice block. So he's going to pull and end up leading through the three hole. And he's going to take the Mac. So as he's pulling, he's tracking the Mac, sort of like a, a heat-seeking missile as he comes along the line of scrimmage. He he's, sees him out of the corner of his eye. Then he drives him out, gives the back a lot of room. And it's a good thing, too, because the left guard here missed the will on that, on that combo block. And this is all Churchill, giving that back a little bit of running room, some tough running, too, from the, from the running back to make this play work. All right, we got a passing play here now. Churchill's going to take the defensive end. You, you can't see him here. He's lined up in sort of like a, like a wide nine. And he's going to try and get Churchill to overcommit to the outside and then come back inside. But instead, Churchill gives us a nice measured kick. He plays the angle perfectly. And then when his guy tries to come back inside, he just puts him into the ground. You can't, you can't get much better than that. That's beautiful. It's perfect. Another passing play, we're going to take a look at him handling a stunt here. So he's out of his stance nicely. And now, so the end attacks the B gap here. Churchill lowers his head a little bit again. It's brief. So he's got those long arms, passes the end over to the guard. And then when he sees the the defensive tackle appear around the outside, he releases the end, picks up the tackle, and it's clean. A little bit of a chip block uh, from the back, but he, he doesn't need it. It's smooth. You can see each step in his thought process here too. And that's what you get from a guy who's played as much football as Churchill has. 
picks up his man, passes him off, picks up the stunt. Awesome. When you watch Jack Kassar, you can you can understand every step of, of his thought process if you think of him like a hunter instead of a football player, kind of like a like a General Zaroff, but with a better ending. Kassar is known for his crushing hits, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen a number of them. But his pass coverage is highly underrated, so that's where I want to start here. The big advantage that he has in pass coverage is that he's so good at, at reading body language and player tells that he almost always knows if it's a pass or run before the play starts. The only time you ever really see him fooled is on RPOs, which obviously that makes sense. But it's it's why you so rarely see him take read steps on play action because he knows it's play action and not a run. So here we've got pretty heavy play action. Kassar barely moves. He's already read pass. And what you won't see Kassar do in pass coverage is just back up and sit in that underneath hole. So he watches the slot back cross underneath on the drag and then he passes him off. And he sees the quarterback move on to his, his next progression. So he snakes back to the right, gets depth because he knows there's got to be a receiver coming back the other way. On He senses this sort of high-low concept. Here's a similar play without play action. We've got a shallow cross, a deep dig to the field. So Kassar tracks the QB's first read and he hands him off. Sticks to the second read, and then as he sees the QB's eyes progress downfield, he gets depth as he snakes towards that dig. He actually he robs his own free safety, who also made an excellent read on this play. He could have had that pick too. Get going, Jack. Full field is good. Second and 20. Looks like we got cover four, but there's a shadow on this guy. Here's Kassar. Now, he's going to have middle hook. You're going to see him attach himself, though, to a few different receivers. So first, he's going to step into the path of this, this sluggo route here. And then he's going to close on, on the wide drag. And it's at this point here that he decides to close on the quarterback. He passes off the drag to the flats defender. And look at this closing speed. <laughs> look at this again. So here we've got a good linebacker with a head start. But Jack is just fired out of a cannon. And he makes that tackle. Uh-oh, GG's again. As much as I hate that they've got four guys wearing different colored socks, Carlton has some really cool blitz packages and Kassar over his time in Ottawa has done just about everything you can do on a football field this is a loop here nothing too complex but it's it's an interesting blitz as a middle linebacker he's lined up on the strong side B and he's going to end up looping around to the weak side B gap the timing is crucial on this play you see him fire through this <laughs> this this slot back does not want anything to do with Kassar. He's just this beast of a man coming through. But this is an adjustment that Kassar is going to have to make coming into the CFL. So the quarterback calls the slot in for, for protection help, but it's a 170-pound freshman. And he sees this, this bear come flying through B, and so he takes off the other way to help the edge. In the CFL, that's, it's not going to look like that. It's going to be a guy like Rodney Smith, and he's going to step into you. And so that's just something that Kassar is going to have to be ready for. He can handle that, but it's not going to be the same as it was over the last few years for him and Carlton. Some run defense now. So this is, this is Kassar here. Watch his lateral tracking. So he scrapes along the line, and then he attacks. Again, his closing speed is just something special he's scraping at the five yard line the back is only a yard deep in the end zone and where do they meet right on the goal line (laughs) 
And here's our new running back, Dion Pellerin, but we're we're still on Kassar film, so you're going to get some some better looks at Pellerin a little bit later. Here's Kassar. It's always easy to find him. He's the guy standing straight up like like Mickey Tettleton or or I guess Jason Voorhees. Uh, make your pick. Pellerin is a beast, but Jack just walks around like this. Look at this hit. It's just a tone setter. He fires up his team. I love that Pellerin pops right back up here. These are not normal human beings. Here's a draw play now. Oh my God. <laughs> right guard. This is not going to happen to CFL either. Like I was saying before, like Jack is going to have to adjust a little bit because there's such a, a jump inability. Here, this this plays a, a nice illustration of what I'm talking about. So Jack's going to come flying through B gap, make a stick here. Let's go back here. The tackle is supposed to pick him up, but he can't get there in time. A CFL tackle will get there in, in time. This is such a nice hit, though. All right, let's wrap up the Kassar film with a look at special teams where I think Kassar is going to make an immediate impact with the Argos. Here he is at Queens. This is a this is a return right. Uh, the kickoff team's uh, left. Uh, man blocking, but they're they're going to leave the the backside one and two unblocked as well as the kicker, so that they can double Kassar here. Kassar is so good on on kickoff team. So you're going to watch him power through the double team. Now he turns on the Jets, fights off both blockers, and just turns the corner and obliterates the return man. That is your second round draft pick. Linebacker Jack Kassar. Look at this play. <laughs> Sam Champong is an incredible athlete. Incredible athlete. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take him to get CFL ready, but his first step is absolutely elite. So here he is in the three tech. I'm going A gap. Whoops. Yeah. Step gone. He's inside again here. Loria used him as a defensive tackle. I kind of wonder if the Argos are looking at him sort of a speed rusher like he's got such good speed but he's got enough size to hold his own on the line we got a twist on the champagne is going to start as as the one tech and he's going to come all the way around to contain actually he sort of cheats it a little bit because uh, he, see, he sees a gap to go through but the qb barely has time to finish his play action <laughs> he's just thrown to the ground 275 pounds a gap to contain to sack in about two seconds Three tech here, coming through a gap. The halfback blitz is just insult to injury. It's funny because you'll see, you'll see a champong with swims, rips, shoulder slaps, the occasional spin move, but he's just practicing because he hasn't actually needed a move yet. The speed has been enough. Three moves and three plays, but each time he had them at hello. Western, hey, we know that guy. We're going to talk about him next, but let's watch a Champong on this play. Strong side three tech. Now on this rare occasion, the Champong is actually going to fire through the gap that he starts in, not without a, a quick inside move. But that brief hesitation from a very good guard is enough. That's that's Bouchard. This is, this is a OUA all-star, and he just blows past him for the sack fumble. It's crazy. This is my favorite play from a champong because we've been talking about that quick first step. But here we're lined up so you can actually see it. I'm not even going to tell you which one a champong is. You'll know. All right, watch this. Boom. That is why we drafted Sam a champong. If the Argos coaching staff can add to his arsenal 
we could be looking at an outstanding CFL player in a year or two. Dylan Giffen is a monster. 6'8", as strong as there was in youth sports football this year. Let's take a look here. <laughs> first, first, he throws his defensive end under his guard. Then he grabs the middle linebacker. Middle linebacker. Power slams him six feet into the ground. Takes his lunch money. How do you only get six yards on this play? Another running play here. So we're going to see him work a combo block uh, with the with the H-back. So they double team the end. Then the back shows wide so the, this wing's going to peel off and, and pick him up. And Giffen just finishes off the defensive end on his own. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at some pass protection. Here we got Laval. With a lot of big men, they're technique isn't great because it never needed to be so you often get these big linemen who have been able to rely on their their size and strength their natural size natural strength and so they don't necessarily have technique they haven't listened to their coaches along the way giffen is not one of those guys his technique is terrific when he locks you up you're done your play is over that's it it's over your only job now is to try not to get hurt before the whistle Giffen. This is a big man. And Giffen made him look like a child. What do you do? He's just playing a different game than everyone else. Here's our guy. And so this end thinks, well, maybe I can't close the pocket down, but I'm going to see if I can still be disruptive on this play. First of all, you can't diagnose what's going on in the backfield because you can't see the backfield. And in the off chance that there's a hitch pass coming your way, like we see here, good luck trying to get off your feet to knock that down. <laughs> You'll be off your feet, but not the way you're thinking. Here we'll see Giffen against a twist. He just plays it perfectly. past the end of the guard, picks up the D-tackle, neutralizes the threat. Not only that, like check out Big Man. The play's not finished. He runs around in front of this poor tackle, blocks him again. I wish we could see if he fell to the ground again or not. That's out of the screen. That's good hustle. All right, this is the only area of concern for me with Giffen, and I'm a lot less worried than I was last week. When you watch his film over the past two seasons, he's slow. Now, he does a great job on this particular screen pass, but you can see that his mobility doesn't match up with CFL standards when you watch him run. And this had me really concerned, not so much for screens, because you can find other ways, but against elite CFL speed rushers, I was worried that he was he just wasn't going to be fast enough. But he's playing here at about 350 pounds. According to the Argos, he's dropped his weight down to 320, which I think is perfect. He's going to be a step faster. His endurance is going to be better. He's going to be a better football player. Dion Pellerin is the back you give the ball to when everybody knows you're running. So many of his carries over the past four years look something like this. Five yards, cloud of dust, bodies everywhere, Pellerin standing in the end zone at the end of it all. He's just such an engine. He keeps his balance really well, so you rarely see one guy take him down. He's pretty big, too, at 225. Here the hole collapses, so he reverses his field, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, <laughs> Runs into these guys, breaks another tackle, and he's still on his feet 20 yards later. He doesn't look overly fast on most of his runs, but he can open it up if he gets a chance to build some steam like, like we see here. And even if you do catch him from behind, it's going to take more than just an ankle tackle to bring him down. He's such a hard runner, and he's got that balance.
Pellerin averaged about two receptions a game at Waterloo. They were mostly screens and leaks, not downfield passes. He doesn't have the most natural hands in the world, so it doesn't always look uh, pretty, but he can catch well enough. And he's going to work in that part of his game without question. As now, instead of attending lectures on, on physical hydrology, he can take in 200 passes a day from the jugs machine. And, and he's definitely going to. His work ethic's off the charts. And so whatever he needs to work on, and I think hands is, is going to be one of those things, then, then that's what he's going to do. I love Pellerin as a blocker, and I think this is where we'll see an immediate impact from him, probably on special teams, but we got a jet sweep here. Pellerin's going to leave a little bit early. There's a crack that's going to cross in front of him, and now he's got to seal the middle linebacker, or in this case, just knock him flat on the ground. That works too. <laughs> so. That'll work as a that'll work as a seal block. His pass protection is really good. Sort of surprisingly, he's not that physical in pass protection, but he doesn't make any mistakes. And I think that probably comes from the fact that he played guard for a year in high school. His grade eleven year, he spent playing guard, and you can see it uh, in in his pass protection. Here they've got a man based. Protection scheme called, maybe big on big. So Pellerin's got the will backer. He twists to the outside. Pellerin rides him around. There's a lot of confusion here on the line, but Pellerin calmly, efficiently does his job and keeps the will from, from getting anywhere near his QB. Sam Baker is big at 6'3", 220. He's got great hands, uses his body well to, to box out defenders. And for these reasons, he's incredibly useful in the red zone. Here's Sam. We got cover zero. And this is, this is a no-brainer for Nias. Baker gets position, makes a nice low catch for the touchdown against a much smaller defender. Red zone again, cover zero again, another small defender. And he's got a gamble just to have a chance in this play, but Baker gets inside position, easy touchdown for the Huskies. Red zone, cover zero. This time Baker's just going to cross the goal line and hold his ground. He's not an overly physical player, and that's something that I think he can probably work on a little bit. But once he gets position, he's so big that there's nothing the halfback can do here. We see those great hands once again. This is the most important clip you're going to see on Sam Baker. And it has nothing to do with what he actually does on this play. It's third and goal from the one. And Coach Flory is head coach and offensive coordinator, a former offensive lineman, third and goal from the one, calls a pass. And Nias' quarterback doesn't even hesitate. If I knew nothing else about Sam Baker, that would be enough. You earn that kind of faith in practice, in meetings, in the weight room. He has the full confidence of his coach and of his quarterback. Similar situation. Again, it's third down, but it's not third and goal. You're going to see an unselfish route from Baker. A, a lot of receivers wouldn't have turned until they reached the end zone. They're looking for the touchdown. Baker sees the defenders. They're all glued to the goal line. He knows where the sticks are, and he pulls up for the easy first down catch. Then he uses the big body, forces his way in for the touchdown, and the football gods reward the unselfish play. Here he does the same thing, second and four. Finds the sticks, has position, but you get to see a little bit of yak here. Catches the ball, got the first down, his acceleration is a lot better than you'd think for a man his size. And he runs pretty well in traffic, too. This is a good athlete we're looking at here. Turns that four-yard catch into a touchdown all the way across the other side of the field. Against zone coverage, Baker does a really nice job of running to open space. Uh, that sounds a lot easier than it is. 
He's not a great route runner, and that's an area in which he can improve. But a lot of Canadian receivers have made CFL careers out of finding space. He's a nice big target coming across the middle, and he's got enough speed to take it in. I feel like teams should play a lot more cover one when Sam Baker, the touchdown maker, is out there. This cover zero doesn't really work here. We we got zero again. We know what's going to happen. We know where they're going. He gets position, boxes out the defender, makes a nice, easy, over-the-shoulder catch with those soft hands. And we'll end with this one. Another nice touchdown from Sam Baker, but this one comes with a warning for all football players and a lesson he definitely learned that day. Baker's the number two receiver. It's cover three. They're going to run a high-low on the free, and it really crosses him up. He goes with the underneath guy. Baker's left all alone. He's off to the races. Now, this is a beautiful 83-yard touchdown, but he's both lucky and unlucky on this play. He's lucky because this early celebration could have led to a fumble instead of a touchdown. Never celebrate a touchdown until you're in the end zone and the referee has his hands up. He's unlucky because even though it's a touchdown, he's got to go and sit through film the next day and there is no chance he didn't get his head ripped off by both Coach Flory and his receiver coach, former Toronto Argonaut, by the way, two-time Grey Cup champion, by the way, Dwayne Dermatrician. There is no way they didn't go nuts on Sam Baker for that early celebration. That is a mistake I promise he will never make again. And hopefully he's got plenty of occasions to prove it in the CFL as he continues to score touchdowns, but this time. Thanks for joining me for another X's and Argos film session. I'm Ben Grant. You can read and watch all my stuff at xsandargos.com or find me on Twitter at Ben double underscore Grant. I'll see you next time.